Next, I'm going to talk about one type of polygon question that comes out every single year. It's very easy, but students tend to overcomplicate it, including me. It's the x plus y question. You do not need to find the specific values of x and y. You need to find them as a whole. But I've always wasted a lot of time looking for the specific value of x and the specific value of y. It looks very messy because I've did all the working. But when I erase everything and look at the bigger picture, it's actually just a quadrilateral with three angles missing. This is a quadrilateral because there are four sides. One, two, three four and the four angles are 94 y x and i'm gonna call this z so in order to solve this first you need to use the formula n minus 2 times 180 n is the number of sides which in this case is 1 2 3 and 4 so 4 minus 2 times 180 we get 360 degrees so the total internal angle of this shape is indeed 360 or in other words x plus y plus z plus 94 is 360 degrees. So x plus y is basically 360 minus 94 minus z. So now we need to look for z. z is one of the angles of a regular pentagon. Regular pentagon means that all sides are of the same length, which also means all the angles are the same. So for this, we use the formula n minus 2 times 180 over n. Again, n is the number of sides. So 5 minus 2 times 180 over 5. If you type this in the calculator, you'll get 108 degrees. Now we substitute this into the equation again, we'll get x plus y equals to 360 minus 94 minus 108. And if you use the calculator to solve this, you'll get 158 degrees, which is B. So as you can see, you do not need to find the specific values of x and y. And in less than one minute, you can actually solve this question. So please don't waste a lot of time and look for all the angles like I did. Do it simple. Last but not least for paper one is matrix question. I'm gonna teach you how to solve this question using the calculator. For example, this question right here for inverse matrix, all you have to do is press mode three times, one, two, three, and you will get the mat option. Mat is basically matrix. So you press two and you'll be in the matrix mode. Now you have to press shift and press four. As you can see above four, there's a MAT option. So you go there, you'll find dimension, edit and matrix. First, you have to click one and you'll find A, B, C. Basically what this means is you can store up to three matrix. We're only using one matrix in this question. So we just press one and now it's asking for the dimension of the matrix. The matrix right here in the question is two by two. So we press two equals to two. Now it's asking for your value of A11. So this is how your calculator determines the position of the value in the matrix. So for example, since the question is two by two, the top left is called A11, the top right is called A12, the bottom left is called A21, and the bottom right is called A22. So you need to compare this form to the question. So in the calculator, when it asks for A11, you need to press two and then equal. When it asks for A12, you need to press negative three. And then when it asks for A21, you need to press seven, equal again. And then when it asks for A22, you need to press negative six. Now you have defined your matrix. Now your calculator knows that the matrix that you're gonna use is two, negative three, seven, negative six. After you've done that, I want you to press on to clear everything and then press shift four again. This time I want you to press three to choose a matrix. So the matrix that we chose just now was A. So matrix A is the matrix that we just now defined. Two, negative three, seven, negative six. In order to find the inverse, you need to press this x negative 1 button which stands for to the power of negative 1 reminder to never use to the power of negative 1 do not do not write it like this if you press equal you'll get syntax error instead you need to use this x to the power of negative 1 and this is the only one that works you press equal and you'll get it in this decimal form so you press shift and the fraction button this a b c and you'll get negative 2 over 3 so you write this down so this is the inverse of the matrix 2 negative 3 7 negative 6 you get negative 2 over 3 and then you press the right arrow and then you press shift fraction again you get 1 over 3 you press right arrow again shift bracket will give you negative 7 over 9 and then you press the right arrow again shift bracket will give you 
1 over 3. So this is the inverse of this matrix. So now I want you to standardize this and make everything over 9, which will give you negative 6 over 9, 3 over 9, negative 7 over 9, and 3 over 9. And after you've done this, I want you to factorize out the 1 over 9. So you'll get 1 over 9, bracket negative 6, 3, negative 7, 3. So now if you compare, what the heck? Okay, I've done a mistake. It's actually 2 over 9, not 3 over 9. So this is 2. Sorry about that. So now you compare this to the original equation, which is 1 over m, negative 6, n, negative 7, 2. So now we know that m is equals to 9 and n is equals to 3. The question is asking for m plus n. So m plus n is 9 plus 3 equals to 12. Hence the answer is A. Now I'm not sure if I explained this well enough. I'm sorry about that. So I'm going to create a playlist for maths which is full of very useful videos. So in that I will add a few really good matrix videos which you can learn and understand from. Okay, that's all my tips for paper one. Now we move to paper two. In paper two, section A, there's always a simultaneous equation question and you cannot get this wrong because you can literally check your answer using the calculator. For example, this question. So based on these two pictures, we can conclude that 2P plus 3G equals to 20 and P plus 2G equals to 11. This is equation one and this is equation two. So all you have to do is press mode three times on your calculator and press 1 to choose equation and then in unknowns you choose 2. So the way the calculator thinks is A1 plus B1 equals to C1 and A2 plus B2 equals to C2. So you need to compare this in this form. And remember the position of your unknowns. If in the first equation you use P plus G, in the second equation you need to use P plus G as well because you need to be uniform with the calculator A plus B and A plus B. You can't write the first equation with P plus G equals to 5 and then the second equation with G plus P p equals to 2. This won't work. The calculator will not recognize this properly. So you need to do it in this form. So now all you have to do is press 2 equals to 3 equals to 20 equals to 1 equals to 2 equals to 11. So I did 2 equal 3 equal 20 equal 1 equal 2 equal 11. And then it will give you x equals to 7 and y equals to 2. x is your first unknown and y is your second unknown. So x is p and y is g. So p is equals to 7 and g is equals to 2. And you, when you check it with my original answer, indeed pen is equals to 7 ringgit and glue is equals to 2 ringgit. Okay, for the rest of section A, I don't have any tips, but I've added a few videos to the playlist that I think you should watch to learn a few things. But for section B, we've got some juice. So there's five questions and you have to choose four. The questions are from graphs of functions 2, transformations 3, statistics 3, plants and elevation, and earth as a sphere. I usually answer everything except for plants and elevation because I can't be asked to draw because I feel like it takes too much time compared to earth as a sphere. But only follow what I do if you're really really good at earth as a sphere because it tends to be really tricky. I've added a few videos for all these five topics in the playlist that I really really encourage you to watch to get a better understanding because I'll only give you my little tips here and there that will make your answers be more efficient. Firstly, graph of function. In part A, you will be given the easiest question ever which is to fill in the blanks. Basically for this question here which is x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x minus 6, I type it in my calculator as bracket negative 4 cubed plus 2 bracket negative 4 square minus 5 bracket negative 4 minus 6 and then I press equal I'll get negative 18. This is to check whether or not I've typed everything correctly because I've substituted x with negative 4 and I get negative 18 so it means I'm correct. So now I just replace all the 4s with 3s. I won't press on and reset everything. I'll just use the arrows, move about and change all the fours with threes. And then I press equal again, I get zero. Now I do the exact same thing again. I replace negative three with one. So I go to the negative and then I press delete. And then at the three, I press one. Again, I move at the negative. I press delete at the three. I press one. Again, I move at the negative. I press delete and at the 3 I press 1. I press equal, I get negative 8. And once again, just to check, I will change all the 1s with 2s. So I'll change this, change this, and change this. 
equal, I get 0. Now I have confirmed that 0 and negative 8 are indeed the correct answer. Okay, after getting your points, go back to the question to see the scale and range and underline it. This is the scale and this is the range. But do not start to use the graph paper yet because we're gonna have a look at the range of the y values as well. So I've wrote down all the information that we got from the question and I'm gonna add one more information which is the range of values of x which is from negative 18 to 70. Now using all of this now you can draw a proper axis. Now for the sake of the video I've already drew the axis and I've plotted all the points but after you do this do not draw your graph yet because I want you to look at the next question. The next question is find the value of y when x equals to negative 1.5. So just like what we did in paper one, we're going to substitute x equals to negative 1.5 into the y value to get an answer. So in your calculator, type open bracket negative 1.5 close bracket to the power of 3 plus 2 bracket negative 1.5 close bracket square minus 5 bracket negative 1.5 close bracket minus 6. You press equal, you get 2.625. Now please do not write 2.625 in the answer here. I want you to round this off to the nearest whole number which is 3. And then in the graph when x is equals to negative 1.5 which is around here, I want you to do a small dot at 3 because now when you eventually draw your graph I want you to go through this point perfectly because this is indeed the correct answer. Now you can go and draw the graph. For me I'll use freehand on the curvy place and then I'll start using a ruler when things get far. So I'm just gonna do this, go through that, do this and then as soon as I get here I'll use my ruler and go like this and then just go all the way. Not too bad. I'd say this is not too bad. I didn't draw my graph well enough here. Like as you can see, this didn't go through the X at all. It should go a bit more down. But when you when you draw your graph, use a pencil and you do it nicely. So next question is what is the value of X when Y is equals to 55? So when Y is equals to 55, use your ruler and draw a dotted line. A dotted line is very important. And you bring it all the way, all the way, and you'll get around 4.2. And then for the last question, draw a suitable straight line on the graph in 12b to find the values of x which satisfy the equation x cubed plus 2x squared minus 8x minus 3 equals to 0 for negative 4 till 4. State these values of x. So now you've got two equations. You've got y equals to x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x minus 6 and then you also have 0 equals to x cubed plus 2x squared minus 8x minus 3. Now if you look at these two equations carefully you would know that x3, x3, 2x squared, 2x squared, these two equations have the same first two terms. And that is great because we are actually looking to remove them anyway. So how do we remove x cubed plus 2x squared with x cubed plus 2x squared? We minus the first equation with the second one. So you just put this is the first equation, this is the second equation and then you write equation 1 minus equation 2 and then you just write the whole thing y minus 0 equals to x cubed minus x cubed plus 2x squared minus 2x squared plus negative 5x minus negative 8x plus negative 6 minus negative 3. And if you simplify all this, basically you will get 3x minus 3 y equals to 3x minus 3 which is a linear equation a straight line which is good so for a straight line we only need the coordinates of two points so since the range of this graph is from negative 4 to 4 i'm gonna substitute in negative 4 and 4 into x to get a y value so the y value when x is equals to negative 4 is we just substitute negative 4 in here and we'll get negative 15 and then the value of y when x is equals to 4 is 3 times 4 minus 3, 3 times 4 is 12, minus 3 is 9. So the two coordinates that you have now, it's negative 4, negative 15, and 4, 9. So plot these two points on the graph. So for me, first I use 
x to plot all the points so do not use x to plot the points of the line as well this time i will use a dark circle so the first point negative 4 negative 15 i'll just put a circle here and then 4 9 i'll also put a circle here and then i'll use my ruler to draw a straight line and then after this is very simple all you have to do is circle on all the intersections and then you extrapolate and then the values of x that you get from all these extrapolations you'll get one mark for each answer which is basically negative 3.9 negative 0.3 and 2.2 Okay, for transformation and plans and elevation, I don't have any tips, so I'll leave a few videos in the playlist that you can refer to if needed. But for statistics, I want you to remember how to draw a frequency polygon and a proper OGIF curve. I have a few notes here, feel free to screenshot. For the scale of these graphs, I realize that the best scale that you can use is always when you cover the whole entire graph paper. Like if you ask me now, I should have brought down my x-axis even further. You need to write the numbers outside the graph paper. Basically just make it as big as possible. I leave a few videos that explain the correct way to draw frequency polygon and OGIF in the playlist as well. And finally, if you're planning to answer the question for Earth as a sphere, remember to always draw the circle complete with all the coordinates as big as possible so that you can see what is going on very clearly. But again, only answer this question if you are 100% certain that you can do it. And yeah, that's about it guys. I will also leave a few videos where y equals to mx plus c discusses the whole paper too in a few live streams. I hope that these little tricks will help you a lot in your exams. Thank you to everyone who commented on my 10,000 subscriber post. It really, really, really means a lot to me. Good luck and as always, aim for the best, never settle for less and let God handle the rest. Peace.